Sorry, but I just have to. <laughs> Danita just said that. That, that L7 out of Flintstones of punk. Yeah. I mean. I mean, that's, I, I don't mean to disparage us, but I, it is kind of at times pretty, pretty uh, basic, lunkhead, fucking rock. <laughs> but awesome. Rock. In, in the best, in the best possible sense. In the best sense. possible sense. Yeah. Oh, but I said that holding up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. Do you need a spot? And she's here now doing guitars over ice cream with me. And uh, that's the flavor of choice. That's the flavor of choice. You, know, you, um, you love you chocolate know it. chip. I love chocolate chip. You like I also ramen. love, I do love Baskin Robbins, and uh, I also love chocolate mint chip That's from awesome Baskin Robbins. Awesome. So it was a tough call when you asked me yeah. to join you today. And uh, my my guitarist selection was also very difficult. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm well, going wait to wait Don't show them yet. No, nope, don't show them yet. The reveal first. isn't there I think yet. you should like, okay. let, let. We, uh, let them uh, ponder and wonder. Okay. <laughs> ponder. It's just magically. Yeah. I wonder if they can guess who my. Let's hear from the audience. Let's hear from our studio audience. Guess who my guitar player is today. You get one guess. You get one guy. Mm. Yummy. Wow, well, that is pretty tasty. Isn't it? Is this mint chip? No, this is just chocolate this chip. This is chocolate chip. Can you like be hallucinating a little bit of mint in there? Uh, it, it could be my listerine from earlier this morning. Oh yeah. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ice cream's good. Wow, this is really hitting the spot. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you a question, ice cream related. Okay. What is, does ice cream mean to you? I mean, like, do you associate a memory with ice cream? Like, do you have what's your earliest memory of ice cream? Um. Uh, I remember that um, the good humor man, his name was Carl. Hey. I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. And Carl, would, in the summertime, would... I wasn't big on Mr. Softy, because that was earlier in the day, and I was just like, why yeah. is Mr. Softy when you could have good humor? So... Uh, good point. The truck would pull up after our dinner, and uh, we would hit my parents up for... Um, to go to the Good Humor truck yeah. and see Carl, who was very fast on those doors, like lightning fast, and he was kind of an older guy. Huh? And, uh, my dad would always get, uh, you know, chocolate eclair or something, and uh, and my mom, I don't know what she'd get, but that was a wonderful summertime. Yeah. Beautiful. He had bells. He wow. didn't have music. He had bells. He ding ding wow. ding, and then. So Carl, yeah. the good humor man, would ring the bell. Yes. You'd come a running. Yes. Wow. Yes, That's we great. did. And what did you get? I would sometimes get chocolate eclair. I would sometimes get like, I think it was called like strawberry shortcake or yes. something. God, I love those. I would alternate between the chocolate eclair and the strawberry shortcake. shortcake. It was the because it, it was the coating. It, yeah, the crumbly. The crumbly. Oh, yep. That that's that's oh. what I'm talking about. Oh, see. That's what I love to hear. I just look ice cream. You know, has had such an impact on me in my life. You know, it's, and I realized that, you know, it is one of the simple and great pleasures in life. And there's so many, you know, life becomes so compl complicated when you grow up and so convoluted and so full of things, you know, full of stuff as, um, as Lux Interior once said, right? Yes, yes. And, and, uh, and, you know, some people were popsicle kids. Yeah. And some people, those big frozen plastic things in plastic that you just right. keep squeezing and eating. Right, of, right. Of, of Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the frozen... Tube, the frozen tube of... Uh, colored color sugar yeah. water. Yeah. Uh, I was never into that. I always liked chocolate. I always liked vanilla. I you know, the, the creaminess. Creamy, the cold, creamy stuff. That, yeah, right. right. The, the popsicle stuff... Yeah. Great for hangovers, mm. gotta tell you. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, this was the this was the jam. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. well that's great. Uh -huh. And Baskin Robbins chocolate chip because you lived near a Baskin Robbins uh, or something, or what happened? That was another uh, special event. If my parents took us to the Baskin Robbins, and I would always get one scoop of chocolate chip, mm. one scoop of chocolate chip mint on a sugar cone, which is still kind of my favorite. Combo. Wow. So I'm very sugar cone versus the other kind. Right. No, I'm all about Whatever the sugar. Whatever it's even called. All about the sugar. And um, I also want to know, I mean, you started L7 in the mid 80s or something, right? Yes. And um, when did you start playing the guitar? I started playing the guitar um, 
I convinced my mother to get me an electric guitar for my 16th birthday, and it was called Norma, and it was a piece of shit. And, it, um, and I started to call it Rude Norma, because every time I'd plug it in, it would just like squeal, like the pickups were just probably like, I don't know, made by a child or something, I don't know, but I didn't want an acoustic. Yeah. I wanted a, an electric, because I had already kind of gone into punk rock and, um, yeah, you know that was the big. Yeah. Well, I want to like one of the guitar players that really got you sort of going in in the direction you have ended up going. Yes. Yeah. As yes. a guitar player. Yes. Um, <laughs> why don't you reveal that guitar player to the nice people out there in YouTube land? I would be happy to. My uh, guitar player of choice for this conversation is Mr. Johnny Ramone. Uh, yeah, from the Kings. The Ramones, and I'm gonna also, you know, give Dee Dee some love in this sure, too, the sure. bass player, because they played so similarly with the right. downstrokes and yeah. and all that. They stuff. were like they were as one. They were, they like, were in sync they were completely. In sync completely. So yeah. I I love the Ramones. They're probably I love the Stones. Stones and Ramones. Stones and Ramones are probably my top rock yeah. and roll. Uh, artists. But gr great top choices and the, the fact that they rhyme is just what a bonus, you know. Like, Who knew that that was going to yeah, happen? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. But, it know. wasn't planned. These are just a little thing. You never know what can happen here. On, on That's right. Course. That's right. These are the little gems I live for. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, Johnny Ramone. Now, we were just kind of messing around with little Blitz Creek Bop yes. earlier. And yes. um, the first song on the first Ramones album, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I think. So, it's like most people hear, uh, that's probably the first song most people heard of the Ramones. I am actually uh, an exception to this rule because I first heard Rocket to Russia. Oh, yes. My sister went away to college. She mm -hmm. came back with Rocket to Russia and I walked into our basement and I was like, what is that? Oh, yeah. And she was like, it's the Ramones. And, and so my first uh, it was right at Rockaway Beach or Lobotomy. Oh, yeah. I think Sheena I think, was a punk rocker. Sheena that? is a punk oh, rocker. Sheena, yeah. But man, when, uh, I, I, you know, I mean, Lobotomy is just, yeah, yeah. you hear that in your <laughs> teenager. It's just like, where has this band, <laughs> where has this band been my whole life? Because they had these demented savant yeah. lyrics. I mean, beat on the brat. I mean, beat on the brat, bit, you know. Who are these guys? Yeah, yeah. So um, that was my first exposure to the Ramones. I stole her record, which actually belonged to her friend, which I then had to replace because I wore the group. Uh, I wore it out so much. And but then I bought their first album, and then I bought Leave Home, which is their uh, second album. Right. And then on and on and on, and I saw them live so many forth. times. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And then what's really cool? Um, so they did that that Tom Waits cover. Um, uh, Oh, I, I don't want to grow, wanna grow up. Yeah, great, great, great book version. Book. And what I really loved is Tom Waits, who never does covers, then covered a Ramon song. Did he? Yeah. Which um, one? Um, yeah. I don't know why he wrote that letter. God, the title is evading me. Um, the Return of Jackie and Judy. Right. That was it. So Which Tom, is great. The Ramones cover Tom Waits. Tom Waits covers Ramones. Yes, I love yeah. that. It's a beautiful thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, so you started... Playing guitar, but is that the first guitar player you were into, or is the Johnny just really like he? That was just sort of the 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 real fuel for the fire, the one that really that was the, sticks with you. You know, the Ramones were the fuel for the fire because, yeah. uh, first of all, their look was outstanding. Yeah. You know, in that in that era of rock, it was so like I always felt it was for older people. Mm -hmm. Like it was like ah, I don't know if I'm, you yeah. know, of course I love the like I said the Stones and yeah. yeah. But I liked a lot of older stuff, like the Beach Boys and the Beatles and all yeah. that stuff. But uh, when the Ramones came out, when I heard, well, when I heard the Ramones, I loved that they looked very American, very um, adolescent, uh, not adolescent, very teenage, delinquent yeah. looking. Yeah, delinquent, yeah. You know? Well, they, again, if you will. They just, they just look fucking great. And yeah. then uh, when I saw them playing and their live performance was just outstanding and you know by the time i saw them i knew every one of their lyrics I, yeah. every song yeah. everyone and the downstroke was oh, yeah. just relentless and there was no upstroking going Never. up it was just <laughs> <laughs> and it was like i was like holy shit. 
yeah, look at the way they played it. So there was no strumming at all. <laughs> no strumming. It was just, it was just hammering the downstroke. Hammering the downstroke. Like yeah, it was crazy. Huh? Hammering the downstroke. And when I took guitar lessons, as soon as I learned how to do a bar chord and play like those guys, like Johnny, you know, like Johnny mm -hmm. Ramone, that's when I stopped taking guitar lessons. It's like... That's all I need. That's all I need. And I've become a better, a little bit better of a guitar player. I'll, I'll play some leads and stuff, and but uh, the downstroke bar chord is just my, it's just my jam. You know, it always reminds me of the, you know, Parliament Funkadelic number up for the downstroke. Uh -huh. Why? I don't know. Just because it's a downstroke. Yes. Right. Yes. But uh, anyway. Yeah, that's amazing. And then by the knees. Uh, the other cool thing about them, besides the jeans with the holes in the knees and the leather jackets, which was just so just quintessentially awesome American hoodlum punk, right? um, the just the stance with the open legs and the guitar slung low to the knees and hammering out with yes. with the, the haircuts. Yes, know, yes. And and um, I always played that way because yeah. they were my idols, you know. So I played with my legs. Uh, spread apart, and um, I remember being interviewed by um, a German guy, and he said, why do you play with your legs spread so far apart? Do you want to be a man? What? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it was great. Oh. We, and we repeat that in L7 oh. lore all the time. In fact, Sorry. he said... Give me a minute to just take in that fact, in. In fact, I, I, I think I misquoted him. He said, why do you all play with your legs spread so far apart? Do you want to be men? And it no. was like, Ow. you know, when you're interviewed by, by some of these people, it's just what amazing. Do what do you say to that? Oh, it became a running joke with us forever. Like, why are you so sweet? Do you want to be candy? You know, it was, <laughs> it's, a, it's still a thread in our, in our vernacular. But, um, yeah, and you know, uh their yeah. simplicity yeah and yet they they were as tough as anybody and their energy yeah. was just it was relentless and what else i learned from the ramones which l7 does a lot uh you know the, the ramones would not take breaks there was no time to like applaud yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. they were on yeah. dd was into the next one yeah. like, there was no stopping it was yeah, just yeah. this like just one after another. The train kept a rolling, and mm -hmm. that what I that's what I strive for with L seven too. We we have what we call rock blocks, and we'll play three in a row, mm -hmm. and then we'll allow for applause or whatever. But yeah. I, I love that. It's just yeah. like yeah. we are gonna we you're not even gonna have a chance to applaud. We're just gonna steamroll your ass, and then we'll give you you will let you come up for air, you know, and, and applaud. <laughs> I and like and then we can come up for air too. But I like it. I, Write I that do, down. No, I'm just kidding. I do love that. No, I, I, like I, I love that very much about the Ramones. And I also love that they sounded very youthful and teenage. And they, all, you know, they always had a middle eight. It was just their their songwriting was like classic uh, yeah. pop. Right, you know, right. classic. A lot. I mean, I love. You know, like for me, and I'm going back to she and his punk rocker because she is my punk rocker. Nah, well, like, well, like, yeah, and then they even do a Beach Boys cover, right? Like, or wait, no, it's not no, Beach did, Boys covered that song that they covered. Who was it? Uh, they did California Sun. Do you want to dance? Do you want to dance? dance? The Beach Boys did do that. Right. I don't know if they were the first ones to do. Me either, but uh, that's how I know it. it. But they, right? They did do that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, interesting. interesting. <laughs> you know a lot, Eric. Well, who knew? I. Who I knew. You know a lot more than I do. I That's don't know about damn that. Damn sure. Well, maybe about we'll some see. things. I don't we'll know. see. I'm, I'm a bit of an ice cream aficionado. You are an ice cream that. aficionado. <laughs> Speaking uh, of which, uh, you know what? Yeah. Thank you. We do have to keep the thread going. Mm. The theme of the show. Wow. Mm. That's my favorite part: is keeping yeah. the theme going. Uh huh. And um. Yeah, so the other thing I was going to say about Ramones and their, and their profound influence, you know, some of my other, like, uh, some other bands that were pretty influential to me early on, like, The Clash wouldn't exist without the Ramones, nor would the Sex Pistols per se, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, people think of, like, the, you know, um, beginnings of punk rock and sort of the, you know, the pioneers, and those certainly are them, but like, both of them would credit the Ramones, right, as being 
Prime Minister. Even though I think this clash first saw the six. I don't know how that works. Uh, no, all those guys were at the Ramones show, I believe, mm -hmm. at the Roundhouse in London in 1976. Right. Like, the, I think it was like, even on July 4th. It was like the bicentennial of the United States. And oh, yeah. what did we give to the rest of the world? The, the Ramones. Ramones. And... Um, I know Johnny was there from the Sex Pistols, and the and the Clash guys were there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that launched. Yeah, that launched everything. That launched it. everything. Yeah, I think I mean, John's got a problem with the Ramones. You should you should check out a, a thing I was on a panel for <laughs> called uh, Punks, and it's a, it's a, it's a panel uh, that was a. It's hard to explain. It was a it was a series on punk rock on on a channel called Epics, and they had a launch party. And I was on a panel about punk with John, Johnny Rotten and, and Marky Ramone and wow. Johnny were like, it was horrible. I mean, and it, it was hilarious, but it was like, oh my God, these are the two bands of that era that meant the most to me. And they're like Feuding. insulting each other. It was, it was, it was kind of heartbreaking, but, but great John television. Oh my God. You got to check out that YouTube. It's wow. amazing. Wow. We'll, do, we'll make a point of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember seeing a clip of that. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, that era, too, I loved, like, the B-52s. Oh, I yeah. loved their guitar playing. I oh, loved, yeah. you know, yeah. um, Blondie. I liked Blondie. Yeah. Uh, I still like Blondie. You know, that whole yeah. era was was very exciting. Yeah. And I think I was, I, I leaned more towards the American side of it, mm -hmm. with probably the exception of... Uh, the Pistols and X-ray Specs. I loved X-ray oh, yeah, Specs. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. You know, you don't hear much people mention X-ray Specs. They that don't. Much. They yeah. don't. But I think that there's a documentary on her, that's yeah. uh, polystyrene that's out now. I haven't seen it, yeah. but I'd, li I'd like to check that out. So. Fantastic. And all the big monster bands, you know, from from Zeppelin and Sabbath and The Who and. Uh, you know, just all the monsters of rock, if yeah. you will. Right? Yeah, yeah. We're like a full swing. So I think for the people, I, like the Ramones were more, a little more of them for the misfits, for the not, you know, for not, it was just so much more accessible and relatable, I guess, if you, like those people seemed untouchable in a way, right? And this seemed like we could do that. Yes, we could hang totally. out with guys, right? Yeah, that's, the, I mean, that's what I was, if, if you set out to be a guitar player, and you're just listening to Jimmy Page. You're like, it's like that's very discouraging. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, and like those those guitars are so great, but just stripping it down, deconstructing yeah. it, boom, let's bring it down to the basics. Like yeah. good catchy songs, fast, yeah. energetic, for you know, singing demented teenage <laughs> themes of hoodlum yeah. and turning tricks and right. everything that they were singing about, and. Yeah. You learn a bar chord, you can play like the Ramones. Yeah. And that's exactly the what energy, I did. the attitude, the whole just it was so much. Yes. Good. And, the, and the shortness of the songs. Yeah. Like they stripped it down to like two two minute, thirty second songs again. Yeah. Or yeah. less, you know. Or less sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh that's what you know, they that's why they were a revolution. Yeah. And uh you know, sometimes when things get too intricate. You know, at first it's really interesting, but then every once in a while it's just got to topple down and get um, yeah, you so back, back to basics, yeah. you know? So yeah. that's kind of what I feel. Well, and the Ramones are timeless, right? They're legendary, yeah. they're timeless, and, you know, they're not going anywhere, right? There's, they've integrated themselves into American culture fully, you know? Yeah. People walk around with Ramones shirts who've never even heard of the Ramones or heard the Ramones, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, that's another thing, but... yeah. Uh, no, I think that I think that um, their uh, artistic director, visually, a guy mm -hmm. named Ar Arturo Vega, who made their um, yeah. uh, their logo and everything, mm -hmm. he had a quote. He's like, you know, there's the Ramones, and everybody else who's just trying to sound, <laughs> trying to be the Ramones, and and they're not, you know, they're not as good. No one, yeah. no one pinnacled them. I, in my opinion, mm -hmm. um, yeah, not, not to this cool, day, yeah. no way, no way. So. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like when you think, what would pop music be without the Beatles? What would like alternative or punk rock or music or all that culture be without the Ramones? Yeah, you know, yeah. I think they're, they're as significant in that realm, you know. And, uh, yeah, and you know, th those guys, they loved oldies stations, like classic oldies stuff. Yeah. And, you know, um, I, I mentioned to you on the phone too, like Dick Dale yeah. and... Uh, 
you know, the Ventures and, and, yeah. and those guys too. It's, um, you know, there was a, there was a fun, youthful exuberance to that music. Yeah. And it got a little adult as, mm -hmm. as it got heavier and it got more complex and the songs yeah. got longer. And then, you know, there were theme albums that were like, yeah. you know. A little too heavy and, and opera. And and, yeah. And it got like, hey, cool for like, you know, the people pushing 28. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. the people who are 15, it's like. Yeah, you know, right. Yeah. 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 Reefer was a bad thing too for rock and roll. Reefer got everybody oh, wow. getting very introspective. Yeah, that's right. And they should have been drinking and doing some speed. And, yeah, and like Lemmy, you know, like he kept that. He know. kept that. Yeah, he kept that going. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah, Thank yes, you, he did. Thanks, Lemmy, for keeping it real. Except then when he tried to go like get healthy on us and switch from whiskey and cokes to vodka and orange juice, you know. Yeah, well, Mr. you know, Mr. Health. Now. Yeah, Mr. Vitamin C. Yeah. Back to the Johnny Ramone and Johnny Lydon feud, or Johnny Rotten, whatever he was at that moment. Um, yeah. I love I love Sex Pistols and Ramones. The Ramones were a cultural revolution, and the Pistols were a political revolution. Yeah. And they were both great, and they were both different. And mm -hmm. Ramones very upbeat and fun, and... Sex Pistols, snarly, dark, and scary, yeah. Yeah. you know, like threatening, yeah. menace, yeah. menace, menace, menace in two different yeah. ways. So uh, it, it, I like, I like yeah. menace in a rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. I, so really both you know, fulfill a need. And uh, yes, yes. You know, why, why can't we just have both? Yes. You don't have to choose. Like ice cream flavors, right. damn it. You can have more than one. You can have 31 flavors. Yeah. Even more. You even can more even... potent, possibly. That's right. <laughs> that is right. That's right. Yeah. That's my friend Danita Sparks. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah, baby. Hey, boy! <laughs> Yeah, huh? That was so hot. That's just the thing. <laughs>